Hey, y'all in for H and H here, and I've got a package to open. Something I ordered. And let me let me get over here to it. I've got radio cam trained on the, over here. Just uh, bear with me. It's from Innovato. It came with all kinds of accessories. This is the Innovato Quadra, the fifty dollar. At least that's what it was when I ordered it. Uh, the fifty dollar kit or bundle. I did order a few extra things. I ordered this uh, this holder here. This that was extra to sit the computer in, and this and this fan to help it run cooler. And it comes with cables, USB mini to USB to USB. Let's see. It comes. It comes with a keyboard that can function as a mouse. So there you see it. And now let's get the Innovator Quadra out. And this is basically a little. Uh, computer that can run the ham clock software looks like yep hdmi it even came with an hdmi cable and there it is there's the quadra give you an idea of the size so all you have to do you see all the see the plugs there so all you have to do is uh get it to the internet i understand it's wireless too um but get it to the internet and uh hook up a monitor and some power so we'll see how it goes okay hey y'all i think i put my coordinates in wrong because that's supposed to be me i got to get that correct but this is what it looks like on initial boot up um, i did get my call sign in there right local time's not correct yet and you'll see what screens come up showing sunspot number um, the the goes x-ray number which is good to have um, and then over here you got your son uh, there's some spots this right here is showing all the um, beacons see the color coordinated beacons right there's the 14.1 I turn that off you'll see what I do uh, in a minute I don't I don't leave that set for beacons I've got a more useful information for it but there's the initial screen I've got uh, Windows set up, not exactly the way I do over here with this one. Um, see how I've got that one set up, and I leave it on maximum usable frequency. I find that very useful. Uh, there's no soda spots right now. DX clusters up. You know, I've got solar WX, solar weather on the top right. I didn't see a need to use the beacons. <laughs> um, and then here's a version running using Ubuntu to simulate Linux. And so this is a version of ham clock that uh, you kind of have to do what I call side loading to put it in on Windows 10. But I do have it working on this monitor. So let me show you where there's the little guy. There's the little quadra. That light goes blue once it's booted up. The the HDMI cable they gave me was no good. I kept struggling to get this, to get anything to show up on the display, and it was the HDMI cable that was in the package. It was just no good. Uh, so I got one of my own, and that's what made it start working. And when I first booted up, it wanted to do an update, so I let it go ahead and do an update. So let me. I'm trying to do this one-handed. Let me let me uh, grab the tripod, and I'll show you something else. So this cable here, this little short one that I showed you earlier. Uh, that's what charges the keyboard. The keyboard has a battery it came with it uh, that you put in right here. Now, interestingly, it will not function while it's charging. So let me unplug it. Now, you can just use your finger as a mouse, and once you touch anything, it lights up. It's really cool. Great little keyboard. I'm tempted to order one of these. Uh, I've got to figure out where they got it, but I'm tempted to order one for my other computer. So it doesn't take up so much desk space. So I have the um, the unit running up there. The DX cluster is not working right now. Uh, it's trying. I may try the other cluster that I'm using. I'm, that one's working with my Windows machine. 
but not working here. Uh, the one that's on the HF clock, it's just been rock solid. I may switch that over to the DX cluster I'm using with the HF uh, clock. I'm going to close that down. I'm going to move my pointer over to where you see the lock symbol. And let me show you how it looks on here. So I just moved it over there. And then I'm going to, you hold down the left click, which is right here. Hold it down. And then let go. And it offers to restart the ham clock. Well, I'm going to exit the ham clock. Are you sure? And this is the screen that you get from the little Innovata uh, Quadra computer. And I had to I had to set the time on it. Uh, let me move this over here where you can see a little better. I'm going to zoom it up there. In the top right, in the top right, you'll see you know Windows is at the bottom, but on this it's at the top. And you mouse over to that, and then right click, which is a which is a function on this keyboard. It's right here. There's left click. There's right click. So I'm going to right click and then you go to properties. I had to go in there and put in minus five because that's where I'm located. But there you go. That's what the screen looks like. It comes with some other programs. Let me see if I can get over there where you can see them. See across the bottom, some other programs. I haven't even explored that part yet. I just wanted to get the ham clock up and running and I did. So to start the ham clock, this is how it boots up. The ham clock is right over there. See my finger pointing? So I'll, I'll move the mouse over there. There we go. And double click. It's going to bring you to this screen here. Let me show you what that's showing. Sorry about the angle. I don't have a good way to get you head on with that monitor. But I'm going to, uh, it's says, asking me, do you want to use the Quadra as a dedicated full screen ham clock on a TV or monitor? And I'm going to say yes. And then it wants to know, would you like to resize the Quadra screen to match ham clock? Uh, this will eliminate the borders left image. You know, yeah, of course, yes. I'm going to say yes. And finally, after you click done, ham clock will run and automatically or will run and automatically on boot. So I'm going to hit done. If you want to get in there and do any setup, there's where you do it. I've already got this one set up, and I've shown you that in other videos. So I'm going to click skip. Here we, there we go. It's giving me the info as it goes out and gets routers and everything else. Signal strength minus 32 dBm. Well, it's sitting in the same room with the route, what router? Yeah, if you're wondering, the Innovator has a wireless modem in it. It also has a plug for ethernet. So there it wakes up. There's the BOA cap data, the terrain map. Got the moon showing up there. I've got that one switching out between sun and moon, so I'll let it cycle a minute and let you see that. It'll start blinking before it switches. Um, on some of these these windows up here, you can select more than one thing and it'll just cycle through them. Uh, except VoaCap has to stay only you know, only VoaCap can run there, and you can't put Soda and Poda on one. You got to have Soda and Poda on two separate ones. Now, see the DX cluster is just not. That's not a solid connection. I'm going to go back and put in the one that I have for my uh, for my HF clock. Um, I don't think the moon has changed. Let me double check that. I thought I had it set to cycle moon and SDO. Yeah, SDO is sun. Huh. Okay, well. Lunar elevation at DE, that's where I am, and at DX. How about that? Yeah, resume. Give me my map back. Yep, I'm going to go fix that DX cluster. But there you go, folks. The Innovata Quadra. $50 for that whole bundle that I showed you. The only thing that seems to not work is the HDMI cable they gave me. But okay, fine. I have one.
So I hope you enjoy videos on my channel. Hope you enjoy seeing these new devices. I've said before in some of the other videos about these, it's a great tool to help teach you or reinforce your knowledge of propagation. I mean, the main thing I get out of this is that I can tap a contact if I'm watching the DX cluster or just tap a place on the screen. Like here, you see the, where the green dot is, right? Wherever I click with the mouse, the VOA cap, once it's working, I'm gonna click here on the Western part of the United States. Right there. Left click the mouse. And that should have moved the green dot there. Yeah, so now it's showing me the weather, see, in that area. And it's showing me down the lower left. Let me pan down there. That, that's 2,066 miles. If I used a beam, I'd want to aim it at 296 degrees. Now, that could have just as well been a station from the DX cluster list or soda list or POTA list. Yeah, this is interesting here. This should be coming back showing me the VOACAP data, which would tell me whether I've got propagation to that, state, that area there if I was working a station there. And the VOACAP's not coming back reliably. Interestingly enough, on the HF clock, it's working solid. See, vocap connection failed. Huh. It's Voice of America coverage analysis program. And they, you know, they've got the beacons around the world and they can tell us that part of the world, what are, what are your chances on a particular band of being able to work somebody there? See, now the DX cluster is working. So I, I can click on that station. Two of them now. So I'll click on that one and it'll move the green dot to wherever they are. See, and now telling me that it's 83 degrees where they are. They're 1,782 miles, looking at the lower left here, a beam heading of 144. And if the VOA cap would come back and work, it will let me know green is go, yellow maybe, red maybe not. There we go. So it's telling me here, these are the bands up and down the left. Uh, based on 100 watts, you can change this. 100 watts, CW, takeoff angle three degrees. I leave that on the default. Um, show me short path and the sunspot number is 126. Short path is when I clicked on them a while ago, it, it drew a red line to, to them showing me the short path, uh, which is what the beam heading it gives you is. See down here, SP, it's showing a beam heading for short path because that's what I have selected up here. And if you change the wattage, you got 10, 100, uh, and 1,000, I think that's it. If you change the wattage, then it'll redraw, redraw the green and red and yellow, showing that you may have a better chance. See the sun over there switching out? Showing that you may have a better chance with more power reaching that region. See, now I'm gonna change it to, oh yeah, we got a one watt setting too, but I'm gonna go down to 10. and let it recalculate. And I probably won't get as many green. Now each of those blocks represents an hour. I've got the clocks set down here to UTC. You can click in there and switch it back and forth between DE, which is your time zone, or UTC. So you're showing me that right there is four hours UTC. So I got a lot of, a lot of hours left that I can operate 80, 40, 30, and 20, and a little bit of 17 to the location of, of down here where this PJ2 station, uh, PJ2ND, where that station is. There's, that's the usefulness of the VOACAP map. And that's the thing I find to be most useful about the device. Okay, hey, I hope you enjoy the video. Hope you enjoy videos on my channel. Uh, please stand by for another 32 seconds. I want to acknowledge five of the Patreon team long haulers. These are the people who make these videos possible. Without them, I would have had to give this up a long, long time ago. I couldn't afford to do it. So they help offset the cost of doing this. So I really want to, I want to acknowledge them. Again, these are people who have uh, supported my work here for a year or two or more. I've got uh, a couple coming up here on three years. So, uh, so please do watch the, the uh, next 32 seconds so you can know some names of people who make these videos possible. Hey, thanks again, 73 from N4 H&H. &H.